So today I'm going to talk to you about the AVRT7 Plus eye gate. The AVRT7 Plus eye gate can connect to a remote radio, but it's not required. It'll function as an eye gate with built-in antenna. There's an antenna port in the back. Go ahead and pull this forward, and as you can see, you've got the antenna port here. This is the um, external radio port. You can do a hardwired network, you can do a USB connection for power, and you can do an LCD display that's external. I do not have one, or you can use a regular DC power plug. I've used both the USB powers, much simpler. Uh, the USB is also used to program the uh, iGate. The version is the 7 Plus, and it's specifically designed to work with radios like the FT8900, along with a few other models. And uh, when you hook up the external radio, you tend to receive a little bit better, and it also works as a um, digipeter as well as an eye gate. As you can see, it just transmitted there. And uh, the flashing light over here, when it's a slow flash like this, this means it's communicating with the APRS network. This light over here means that we have a network connection. So the um, AVRT7 Plus comes with the antenna for testing, and this antenna just goes into the back of the device. If we bring the device up, you see the hole there. It basically is the same connector as a bow fan, and the antenna just screws in like any other antenna. In there. You can actually use it with you know that antenna without the external radio, and it will pick up uh, some devices. Uh, but it's um, it's not a great antenna. I ended up using an external connector. So I'll go ahead and show you what the connector looks like. Get these on Amazon for not too much. Goes to a PL259 to a uh, SMA connector, and then I just hooked up a, a J pole, and that worked much better. So the uh, connection from the AVRT7 Plus, the computer's through a USB cable that comes with it. And it's a special USB cable. It's it's not just a standard USB cable. Oh, and it does there's a driver available online for the cable. But on Windows 10 it just installs. So if you go to your, your computer manager and you look in your device manager, it'll give you the COM port. Once your uh, computer manager's up, you click on the device manager. And then you look under the COM port settings, and the COM port settings are down here, and it's going to give you the information is COM3. So with COM3, um, we can actually open up a, a computer program called PuTTY, which is available for free online. And uh, I have the 64-bit version, but any version should work. In PuTTY, you would specify it as a serial port and you would specify the COM port here. This is a terminal program and uh, the speed is 115,000 and then uh, you hit open down here and you'll have a terminal open up and after a minute or so you'll start to see activity from the device. Um, as you can see there's, a, there's some garbage there but there's also some APRS information listed and then some more APRS data coming across and uh, this is what the device looks like as it's operating. I'm going to go ahead and reset the device which I do that by unplugging the uh, USB cable and plugging it back in since I'm running on USB. As you can see we lost our connection so I'll plug it back in and I'll reconnect. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the device back in and we'll hear it go dun -dun -dun. And I've saved my settings for COM3 here. And I just double click it on PuTTY and I'll watch the device turn on. Uh, we did miss a little bit of the startup sequence, but this, this should show us it connects here in a second. Or two or three. So there now, now it looks like we're up and running. We got an IP address and uh, We've got some other information here. We've, we've got the server midwest.aprs2.net. 
and all this information set up. And password work. We're connected to the server and we're talking. We're now connected to APRSIS. And that's how we know we're working. So now we'll go into the configuration program. You do need to close this out because the COM port is used by the configuration program. That program is downloaded from Radio Oddity website. And then you decompress it. So here's the executable. We've got a uh, executable here. It's an application. We have a bin file. The bin file is a firmware update. The firmware update is pretty easy, but the first thing you do is you read the configuration in. So this program is uh, not that hard to use, but it, it does take some getting used to. So I had COM port 5 selected, so my read did not work. I'm going to select COM port 3, click read, and now it's read all my data in. As you can see, I've got my call sign listed. Uh, one listed my password, which is is confidential, so don't go around, you know, looking that up. Um, the backlight is for the monitor, which or LCD display panel, which I don't have. Neither measurements is miles. I do have an external radio on, so I've checked Digi. If I did not have the external radio, leave Digi unchecked. That means you're a Digi Peter. In the U.S., we use wide one and wide two, which is what's selected. And then we, in this posi plus comment, is where you want to put in your location. And that location is, um, you can go to uh, Google Maps or a program like that and find your GPS coordinates. And then you want to convert them into this format. And the north is a positive number and the, the west is a negative number. So... If your coordinates that you get on your GPS um, are a minus number, then that's a west. If it's a positive, it's east for, for the second parameter. And for the first parameter, if it's a minus number, it's south. If it's positive, it's north. You have to have that uh, bang symbol or the, uh, uh, the shift one key to start. You put your coordinate in with an N for north or S for south and the slash and then your other coordinate with the leading zero and then it ends with either a W or an E and then an R is the symbol that will show up on the map and there's more symbols you can use. The R looks like a little tower. Then the status is ready. I use the midwest.aprs2.net. There's several in the drop down list that are in China and Japan and I believe there's a European one. Uh, the time I transmit is every minute, for, so every 60 seconds I'm, I'm updating the, the website. I've got DHCP configured. The Wi-Fi information does not read back, but it is set. And basically you put your SSID and your password and you hit apply. It's using WPA2 and it either works with your router or it doesn't. There's some settings on your router you can configure, but um, in general, you just need a WPA2 router. And once you hit apply, it writes to the router. And then uh, at that point, you want to hit write data and it will update the device. After it updates, there's this reset option. So if we hit restart here, and then we open up PuTTY and we open up the COM port we can watch it restart the ability to use the COM port to actually see what the device is doing is really nice it can let you debug issues so the next step is we want to make sure that we're actually showing up on the APRS map. I'm going to type in my call sign which is AC9HP-1. I'll hit search. And I show up on the map. And I can click on info. And then 
it tells me how long ago I actually was heard or, or posted. So that's your last position was 34 seconds ago. And then as I hear other stations, they should show up in the last heard list here. So stations heard directly by AC9HP-1. It's got a whole list of stations that, that this uh, I gate has heard and sent on. And as you can see, not all of them were heard today. But uh, it looks like that top one was, which is the W9ICE-10. And, and that's how you install this uh, I gate and Digipeter. So again, this is what the, the device looks like. And that slow flash, flashing means it's actually communicating over the net with the APRS servers. The fact that you have an update on the APRS.fi means you have it configured correctly. If the format of your GPS information is wrong, it won't work. It just ignores it. If it's uh, wrong, but it's the right format, it'll just put you in the wrong place on the map. For instance, I, I'd accidentally put east, and that put me somewhere in the middle of China. And again, it works very nicely with the FT-8900 radio.